morning. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. I'm so glad you could join us for Sabbath school. Let's sing some songs. I brought my accordion today. Have you seen an accordion before? No. It kind of looks like the piano. It has the piano keys on this side. And, and the I... left hand pushes buttons on this side for chords. And, and my bullet. Let's sing Jesus Loves Me. You ready? Yep. Jesus. start our Sabbath school here. Dear Jesus, please be with us as we learn about you today. Thank you so much for Sabbath. Please bless each boy and girl who's listening today. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Let's go to our nature program. Come on. Welcome to the Nature Corner. We have, again, a special guest, Dr. Ron with Tracking God Through Nature, and he has brought us some more of his insect collection. What did you bring today? I brought a longhorn beetle that is a good example of something that we call, it's a long word, it's called dimorphism. Dimorphism. And that just means that it has two different forms. So they look different. This is a longhorn beetle. And you can see right away that it looks different. One of them looks different than the other two. And that is because the male beetles look different than the female. And uh, a lot of these types of beetles initially 
had two different names because scientists thought they were two different species of beetles, but they're actually all one species. Mm. Wow. That's really cool. That's, that's a lot like how we see the birds, how one bird looks different than the male looks more colorful often than the female. Right. That, that's really neat. And if that really makes us think about the creator because there's a theme here in all, all the things God's made, like the birds and the, the, the deer look, the female deer looks different than the male deer right. and things. That's really neat. Thank you so much for sharing your little bit of your collection with us. Did you enjoy that? I sure did. Well, well, let's go to the next part of our program. Now, let's go and learn more about Ellen White. Come on. You remember last week we learned about how she was baptized. She went, how was she baptized? That's right. She went under the water and came back up, just like Jesus was. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water. Now, we're going to learn about a special message a preacher named William Miller brought. Let's learn about that story. Ellen Harmon's family were eating supper, and someone excitedly said, oh, William Miller is coming to preach tonight. Oh, we must go and hear him. So the whole Harmon family went to hear William Miller preach. At the meeting, William Miller had amazing tracing of the prophecies through Scripture. He told about a very strange dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, and he had such wonderful pictures. They were so amazing. Do you remember that story? Let's look at the story of Daniel chapter 2. Have you ever had a strange dream that you couldn't remember when you woke up? Well, one night, King Nebuchadnezzar was sleeping, and while he was sleeping, he had a very strange dream. But when he woke up, he couldn't remember it. He called for his wise men so they would come quickly to the palace and help him know the meaning of his dream. The wise men all came at once to see why the king was so troubled. When they learned the king had had a dream, they were worried. They all said to the king, tell us your dream and then we will tell you the interpretation. The king said, it's gone for me. I cannot tell you what I dreamed. Tell me what I dreamed. And they thought a little while, and they said, what are we going to do? We can't tell another man what he dreamed. Only gods can do that. They didn't know what they were going to do. And the king said, if you don't tell me my dream, I'm going to put you in prison, and you'll be killed, and all your homes will be made into dunghills. And they said, well, tell us the dream, and then we can tell you the interpretation. The king was so angry, he ordered that all of them be killed. Daniel and his three friends did not know about the king's dream. For some reason, they were not called to the court when all the other wise men were called. They did not know about the king's anger until the soldier was coming to take them away to kill them. Daniel asked the guard if he could go talk to the king and ask him for some time that he might talk with the God in heaven. The captain of the guard quickly took him with him to go see the king. When Daniel went before the king, the king asked him, Do you know what I dreamed? And Daniel said, No, but please give me time so that I can talk to the God of heaven, and then he will let the king know the meaning of the dream. And the king said, Okay, but only one day. One day, and if you don't tell me, you will also be killed. 
Daniel quickly went home and told his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, what the king had said. And they all agreed they would pray and ask God to show what the meaning of the dream was and what the king had dreamed. So they all prayed and prayed and prayed. And in the night, God told Daniel the dream that the king had had. And he also told Daniel what it all meant. Oh, in the morning, they were so happy. Daniel told his friends what God had showed them. Daniel and his three friends were so happy. They praised God and they told him how thankful they were. And they knew that there was a God in heaven and he revealed the king's secret. In the morning, Daniel quickly went to the king. The king asked Daniel, Are you able to interpret my dream and tell me what I dreamed? And Daniel said, No, but there is a God in heaven who has revealed to the king what will be in the latter days. Thou sawest and beheld in thy dream an image which was made of all different kinds of metals. And the head was of gold, the arms and chest of silver, and the stomach and thighs of, of brass, and the legs of iron, and the feet part iron and part clay. And while you were watching, O king, a big stone came and smashed the image of the feet and ground it all to powder, and the wind carried it away. And that stone got bigger and bigger until it filled the whole earth. The king said, that's it. That's what I dreamed. Now, Daniel, tell me what it means. And so Daniel started to tell the king what the dream meant. He said, thou art the head of gold. The king Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, was the head of gold. After him would arise another kingdom that was not as strong as Babylon. And after that, another kingdom would come that was not as strong as the silver. And after bronze would rise another kingdom of iron that was not as strong as as bronze, and then finally, the feet of part iron and part clay and the ten toes. He said that after this, God's kingdom, the rock, would conquer all other kingdoms, and his kingdom would rule the whole world. King Nebuchadnezzar believed that God had showed Daniel the meaning of his dream. He gave Daniel many gifts and appointed him to be ruler over the whole province of Babylon, as well as chief over all the wise men. Daniel trusted God with all his life and all the circumstances in his life. And God rewarded him. He gave the honor to God when God gave him the interpretation. It's best that we trust God with our lives and we ask him for wisdom. Now let's take a closer look at King Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the image. We know from what Daniel said that the head of gold was Babylon, and after them arose a, a weaker kingdom. We see from history the next kingdom was Medo-Persia. kingdom lasted from 539 B.C. to 331 B.C. 
when Alexander the Great of the Greece came into power. And then, just like the dream said, the next kingdom would be a little weaker. And it came in 168 BC to 2 AD 476. AD 476, the Roman Empire was divided into 10 different parts in Europe. Some of the kingdoms are strong and some are weak, just like the iron was mixed with clay. There would never be a world empire again. And then the stone that came and smashed the image at the feet that grew and grew and grew till it filled the earth. That's when Jesus comes in the clouds. His kingdom will fill the whole world. And he'll take us to his home in heaven. Jesus loves us so much that he tells us about what's going to happen in the Bible. He wants you to trust him as we see how his word has come to pass in the past. We can believe that he can take care of us in the future. The big stone that hit the image was Jesus, and William Miller exclaimed that the last kingdom, the final kingdom, would be Jesus' kingdom. The rock would fill the whole earth. Jesus was going to come soon, and we want to be ready. Ellen and her family were so happy to know that Jesus was coming soon. They wanted to study more about the, what the Bible said. We must ask Jesus to help us every day to be more like him so that we can be ready for when Jesus comes so that we can be part of that kingdom. Now let's go to the next part of our program. We have a special guest with us today, Dr. Rose. She's going to tell us about how to keep our lungs healthy. Let's go. She's under the willow tree. Let's go see. And uh, the th our theme is, I love vibrant health. Some are trapped in the habit of smoking, like this uh, model we have here, Smokey Sue. She's really making puffs of smoke that are really smelly. And there are 600 ingredients in cigarettes that are very harmful. 200 are known poisons. It takes three hours to clear a room, so we're doing this outside. It takes three hours to clear a room. When we go on a trip and we stop over in Amsterdam, there's a room where all the smokers go. And when the door opens, nobody can breathe. For hundreds of feet from that door, the smell is so strong and it fills up the clothes. And some people in the room, like a baby, a baby, is taking in the, the used smoke that's in the air and it, it harms and also causes cancer. The, in the sandbox, uh, we have a little kid playing there that could get cancer from the smoke of Sue. So when she comes to my office and she wants help, this is the toxins that have gone down into her lungs and into her body that she is struggling with for the rest of her life. There are six times in a there are six times the air pollution that you get along a freeway of busy traffic from smoking. <coughs> Makes me cough. I'll name a few of the dangerous things. There's acetone, ammonia, arsenic, carbon monoxide cyanide, DDT, formaldehyde. There's formaldehyde in there. Lead, methanol, there's nicotine, tar, mercury, and there's many more. I said there's 200. There is a 
lot of temperance societies that have tried in legislation to ban the sample giving of one or two cigarettes and ban the sponsorship of the smoking companies in the sports events. When you do this kind of smoking inside the mouth, there gets <coughs> that smoking came my way. There's cancer of the throat, cancer of the mouth. Don't let children breathe that smoke. They can get pneumonia and they can get ear infections easier and they can die in the crib from the mother smoking. They get mouth disease. They get disease where the teeth connect, the gums. And it's so smelly, their nails turn yellow. Their teeth turn yellow. They get more of the grandma wrinkles before it's even time. And you see, she has a blood pressure cuff on her arm. It's a high blood pressure. And she has an increased heart rate. The wind is helping this cigarette burn up really fast. And if it was a very dry um, summer day, we could start a fire. People have started fires with their smoking habits. They get short of breath and they get heart disease. They can have a stroke and not be able to talk or feed themselves because of their habit of smoking. They can have emphysema lung cancer, can cancer of the larynx, and of the stomach they can get cancer. They can get cancer of the uterus and of the breasts. And they get so sick and they die younger and they're miserable. And their clothing does not smell good either. If a, a teenager wants to just try it, and they say, well, I can quit anytime I want. Five or six years later, they're still smoking because the habit makes them have to go. But what about the cost of one packet? By the time you pay tax, it can be up to $10 for one package. And what if you're taking two packages a day in your smoking or three? That's, that's a lot of money a day. $30 a day, $40 a day. Ah, oh, what could you buy with that much money? You could buy your food easily for a whole month. $40 a day is a lot of money. Some are doing four packages a day. That's a very strong, terrible habit. And all the mercury that they're getting in their body well, why do people even think about trying this thing? There's movies that show people smoking and they times peer pressure. Sometimes the family, like the mother, is already smoking and so the baby's going to grow up to do the same and the toddler's going to grow up to do the same thing. Is that what you want your children to do? Do you want them to copy those things? Or your social group? causes you to want to do those things. Well, what can you say if someone tells you to try it? It'll make you prettier. You say, no. If someone says, it'll make you look macho man, you have to have tried it. You say, no, and you leave quickly. You go away from the pressure. You say, no, I will not smoke. The Bible says, in Corinthians 3.16 that your body is the temple of God and it is holy. You should not use it for smoking and drinking because it causes a problem in the brain. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Know you not that you are the temple of God 
and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him God will destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Don't let any man deceive you. If any man among you seems to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he can be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he takes the wise in their own craftiness. So the companies are making a lot of money on these cigarettes. And people are spending a lot of money to get well after they've been using cigarettes. And they're spending a lot of money on cigarettes. I hear something. Here. What do I hear? I think it's, you suppose, it's the garbage truck? I think it might be the garbage truck. Yes, it's coming. Good, good. It's coming to take these cigarettes away. And I encourage you to throw away those cigarettes. Destroy them so no one else can get them. Put them in water and rip them up and destroy them. And send them out with the garbage truck. Interesting to see smoking Sue. I was really sad, wasn't it, to see what that could do to her. It's very important to keep our bodies strong and healthy. You know, the Holy Spirit tells us the secrets of how we are to be healthy. And when we have the fruits of the Holy Spirit, do you remember what the fruits of the Holy Spirit are? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, patience, faith, and temperance. Temperance is how to keep your body healthy by getting lots of exercise and drinking lots of nice water and fresh air and sunlight and rest and trust in God. We can be healthy by doing these things. And we need to pray and read our Bibles every day. That's how we trust God. Read your Bible. Pray every day. Pray every day. Pray every day. Read your Bible. Pray every day. And you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. But neglect your Bible, forget to pray, forget to pray, forget to pray. Neglect your Bible, forget to pray, and you shrink, shrink, shrink. And you shrink, 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 and you shrink. Shrink, shrink, neglect your Bible, forget to pray, and you shrink, shrink, shrink. So we need to pray and read our Bibles every day, don't we? And Jesus will help us when we want to serve him. He will tell us the secrets of how to be healthy. In Amos 3 verse 7 it says, Surely the Lord will do nothing, but it reveals his secrets to the servants of the prophets. And in John... It talks about the Holy Spirit. When it, the truth has come, he'll guide you into all truth. Shall we sing that song? <laughs> when, however, the Spirit comes, who reveals the truth about God, he will lead you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but he will speak of what he hears. And will tell you of things to come. The Holy Spirit is our instructor, isn't it? He will help us keep our bodies strong. I have two wonderful stories by Uncle Arthur's Bedtime Stories. And they will help us understand how to keep our bodies healthy. This story is called A Boy in Chains. The other day, I saw a strange sight in New York City. Yes, it was a boy in chains. What, you say? A boy in chains nowadays? 
Yes, a real live slave boy, despite the fact that Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves a long time ago. The boy was quite small, which made me think that he was very young. But his face had a strange, oldish look, so that I couldn't tell just what his age might be. As I looked at him, I was struck with the fact that he was puffing away at a cigarette, like a grown -up. So I decided to speak to him. How is it that you are smoking at your age? I asked him kindly. Can't help it, mister. He replied with an amazing frankness. Can't help it, I repeated. That's very strange. How old are you? Just thirteen. Just thirteen, I exclaimed. Then how long have you been smoking? Three years. Three years, I said, astonished. You mean to tell me you've been smoking since you were ten? Yes, the other boys smoke, so I started too. What other boys? All the boys in my grade at school. And most of the seventh graders smoke too. And the sixth? Yes, mister, some in the sixth. I know. I've seen them. I was amazed. Wondering how many boy slaves to the smoking habit there must be in the country nowadays. And now I suppose you can't give up it. I said. Then you're a slave, I said. That's about it, I am. I'm a slave at 13. You'll be terribly sorry later, I said. You're poisoning yourself. You will never be able to do well in school. You will never be able to do well in play or in work if you go on like this. I know, he said. Sort of gets your wind. You can't run as fast. You'll... I felt it myself out on the school playground. So he had noticed the terrible effect of tobacco already. At 13! Poor little slave. He walked... He talked on a while about the harm that smoking does and the importance of breaking the habit right away. You will have to call up all your willpower, I said to him. And put your foot down now. Maybe after I've smoked these, he said, pointing to the big pack that was bulging from his pocket. No, I said firmly. If you want to stop it, there's only one time to do it. That is now. I know. That raised my hopes. You're right, son, I said. You have the idea. Stop now and throw the rest away, will you? I think I will, he said. Good boy, I replied. Promise me that you'll never touch the horrid things again. All right. We shook hands on it, and I sent up a little prayer that Jesus would help him in the struggle he was bound to have. As we parted, there was a brave look on his face. My little slave friend had come very near to freedom. His chains were unloosed. Did he step out of them into a new life of liberty? Did he break his promise? I rather think he did. Do you think he kept his promise? I sure hope so. And I hope you boys and girls are never tempted with the horrible habit. Never try it, boys and girls. And if you know someone who is trying, who is about to try it, just tell them no. And pray for those who are trapped in the horrible slavery habit. Our next story is about another habit people have. Eating between meals. Are you ever tempted to eat between meals? When mama says don't eat till dinner time and you see the something and you want to eat. Well, Vera had that problem. Vera's victory. Vera was one of those lively little girls, you know the kind, full of high spirits, always getting into mischief, the kind that makes mother tired. It gives father headaches. This particular afternoon, Vera had been a little more lively than usual. And when the time came for her to go to bed, no one was happier than mother. 
Ah, at last, Mother sighed, as she went downstairs after tucking Vera into bed and kissing her goodnight. Now perhaps I can have a little peace. Mother went into the dining room, now quiet and still. Feeling very tired, she decided to lie on the sofa for a little while and take a rest. Gradually, she felt herself falling asleep. Then, before her eyes were quite closed, something began to happen. <gasps> very slowly, very softly, the dining room door began to open. A little more, a little more. Who could it be? Mother thought, frightened. Had a, had a burglar gotten into the house? Then what do you suppose? From behind the door came a white-robed figure. Yes, it was little Vera in her nightie. That's her jammies. Mother did not move, nor did she say a word. She just <laughs> pretended to be asleep and watched. Vera tiptoed across the soft carpet over to the dining room table. Now in the middle of the table was a large bowl of apples and great oranges and nuts and things. On top of all was a big bunch of grapes. <gasps> oh. Vera had been looking at this bunch of grapes all day wishing that it might be hers. Now she reached out her hand and picked up the grapes and tiptoed out of the room, closing the door behind her. Of course she thought that nobody had seen her, but mother as usual had seen everything. Mother always does. But now mother felt very sad. To think that my Vera would do a thing like that, she thought to herself. To think that my own little girl would wait till she thought I was not looking and then creep down here. To steal that bunch of grapes. Oh dear, what shall I do? What shall I say to her? Then just as mother was feeling very much upset, something began to happen again. Once more the dining room began to open, very softly, very slowly. And from behind it came the same little white robed figure. It was Vera again, still in her nightie and still clumping the bunch of grapes tightly in her hand. Can you see it? Yeah. I don't see it. <laughs> Tiptoeing over to the table, she put the bunch of grapes back in exactly the same place. Then in a big loud voice she said, And there, Mr. Devil, that's where you get left. After that, she turned around and started for the door. But before she had reached it, Mother was to her feet and her arms were clasped around Vera's neck. Oh, darling, she cried, and I'm so glad you won the victory over that temptation. What a happy time they had together then. I like to think of what must have happened on the stairs that evening. All the way up, the voice of the tempter had said, Go on, Vera, grapes are nice. Take one. It'll be okay. Mother will never know. It will be all right. And at the same time, a voice inside her had said, No, 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 don't, Vera. That would be stealing. That would be wrong. Mother wouldn't like it. Be a good girl now and take those grapes back. Put them on where you found them. Somewhere on the stairs, the victory was won. And after that, everything turned out happily, as it always does when we fight temptation and win. Every boy and girl is tempted at some time or another to do something wrong. Sometimes the temptation is very strong indeed. Sometimes you may wonder what is the right thing to do. But if you listen to the little voice that speaks within your heart, the voice of conscience, you will not make a mistake. Jesus will give you the victory if you ask his help. Wasn't that wonderful that Vera got the victory? There's a wonderful story in the Bible about four friends that were not going to change on their appetite, on their diet either. 
they were not going to indulge in appetite. Let's go to our Bible corner and we'll learn about it. Come on. Do it. Are you ready to study the Bible? Yes. Okay, before we start, let's pray. Dear Jesus, please be with us as we study the Bible. Help us to be good listeners and learn a lot. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our story comes from Daniel chapter 1. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon destroyed Jerusalem and the kingdom of Judah. He took many people captives. Among the captives were Daniel and his three friends, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, King Nebuchadnezzar asked Ashpenaz to choose young men who he could train in his court. These men would be treated very special. They would be given food from the king's table and wine. The only problem was this food was not healthy. It was not the kind of food that the Israelites liked to eat. The, the meat had been sacrificed to idols and God had told them not to eat unclean meats. And they would not drink the king's wine because that wine was intoxicating. It was like the alcohol we have today. They didn't know what they were going to do. So they went to Melzar and they asked Melzar if he would give them poles to eat and water to drink. Poles is like beans and grains and vegetables and fruits. The um, Melzer said, oh, I don't think so. If, if the king should look at you and see that you look sick, he would, he would take off my head because that is not the way to treat his wise men. And Daniel and his friends said, please try us for 10 days and then we'll see. He said, okay, but only for 10 days. He commanded that they be served food, grains, and vegetables, and only water to drink. And after the ten days, it was found that they were fairer and fatter than all the other wise men. At the end of the three years of their education, the king tested them and found they were ten times wiser than all the wise men of Babylon. God had blessed them because they had decided that they would obey what God says for diet. And God will bless us too when we decide, when we purpose in our hearts to be like Daniel and his three friends and obey everything that God says. Standing by the purpose firm, heeding God's command, honor them the faithful few, all hail to Daniel's band. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone. Mommy. Dare to have a purpose firm, dare to make it known. Let's pray that God will help us to be strong and be healthy. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for our Sabbath school. Thank you that you are going to help us and teach us how we can keep our bodies in health. Please bless our efforts and help us to have your wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. So glad you joined us for Sabbath School. Come again, okay? We'll see you next time. Bye! Here I think that